Hello and welcome to Heart Talk India. Astonishing as it may seem, statistically speaking, there's a rape taking place in India every 54 minutes. But sadly, that's not the only form of violence that Indian women have to contend with. Again, records show that one out of three Indian households are the scene of domestic violence. So what's being done about this sorry situation? Here to discuss the subject is the former chairperson of the National Commission for Women and now chairperson of the Guild of Service, Mohini Giri. Dr. Giri, those are really astoundingly worrying figures. A rape every 50 minutes and 30% of Indian households involved in violence. Is this really a reflection of reality? Karan, uh, yeah, Karan, thank you. But uh, these are only the figures that you have really told us today. How many are unreported cases? There are thousands and thousands of women who do not have access to going and reporting, to lodging an FIR, and the situation is even worse than what you have said statistically. These are the reports from the crime, bra crime branch that these are the things. But the situation is not bad, uh, not good. And you would ask me, why is it so? And the uh, reason for that is that India is still a patriarchal society where a woman is just supposed to obey, and the patriarchal norms still exist. And today's context... Before we come to explain why the situation yes. is as bad as it is, let's just try to clear the air on exactly how bad it is. I mean, right. I believe one of the other facts that I haven't mentioned mm -hmm. is that there is a molestation of a woman or a crime against true, a woman true. every seven minutes. Well, today, just before you asked me to come here, I got out some of the figures which are latest, and it says a molestation every 26 minutes. There's a criminal against uh, women every seven minutes. A crime against women every seven minutes, abduction 43 minutes, eve teasing 50 mi 51 minutes, every 51 so minutes. Pardon me, tell me, just how safe on the streets of women, given this horrific situation, are women? Just well, as are long they? as m men don't change their mindset, women are not safe. You really mean that? Yes. That's not an exaggeration? No, it's not. Women are actually unsafe in yes. India? in India. And elsewhere also in the world, of course. I won't call India an absolute country where, even in America it happens. Let's start by talking about rape. R.K. Raghavan, the director of the Central Bureau of Investigation, yes. has in an article in Frontline Magazine recently yes. estimated yes. that the incidence of rape has increased by 65% in the last one decade alone. Yes, that's right. That's and so now you would like to know the reason, at least now, why it's happening. Shall I tell you the Please reason? Do. The reason is now more and more women are asserting themselves, especially in the middle class. They are coming out and they are trying to work and this is going against the psyche of the man. He doesn't like because the ob obedience that woman, women had given to him all these days is disappearing. So are you saying that, in fact, the reason why the figure has gone up is because more women are actually reporting rape or yes. because more rapes are happening? Which is it? Well, both. More rapes are happening and more rapes are being reported. And more rapes are happening because man is now not liking the independence that women are having. But if you are saying it's both, then are you also saying that the incidence of rape mm -hmm. is increasing faster than the incidence of other crimes? Well, incidence of rape is increasing with the, in with the ratio of the population also. Because we must also But if it's then keeping track with the ratio of the population, mm -hmm. and the population is growing fairly phenomenally, yeah, it is. then clearly the percentage of rape yes. is staying the same. Uh, well, it's not. But percentage of rape has gone up. Because the reason I bring this up mm -hmm. is that the chief of police in Delhi, a city mm -hmm. which has seen some of the mm -hmm. most distressing incidents mm -hmm. in the last five, six months, mm -hmm. is actually on record saying mm -hmm. that the reason why the figure has grown is not because more rapes are happening, but, they're being but reported. because more are being reported. And that ties in with what you said, mm -hmm. that women are becoming more assertive. Yes. They are being reported, definitely. And that's why the incidence of rape, as far as the statistics goes, is increasing. But that's not saying of what not being reported. I'm uh, trying to again emphasize that more than half the cases are not being reported. So the totality is a lot yes, worse than we actually than, imagined. Yes, yes, now, R.K. Raghavan, in the article that I quoted mm -hmm. you a moment ago, has also said, and I want to quote you, he says, women are becoming increasingly vulnerable mm -hmm. because of the growing number of women in educational institutions mm -hmm. and workplaces. Sure. Is emancipation making women easier to have I won't call it emancipation, because that's no definition of emancipation. The progress of man has not been keeping in pace with the woman. You know, the women are getting emancipated, the women are getting empowered. Men remain but regressive men remain in their regressive, thinking. Yes, in their thinking. And they think that the woman is remaining static at that place. And they are not changing their mind. So now, social workers like me, and activists like you, and media people, we should address ourselves more to men. 
You know, in the last six months, mm. Delhi has seen some very high profile yes. and extremely distressing incidents. There's been a rape of a foreign diplomat outside yes. a well-known cinema hall. Sure. There've been college students raped in well-known parks. Yes. Even worryingly, three, four, five-year-old girls. Yes. And in some cases, the offenders have been sadhus, and in others, members of the president's bodyguard. Yes. Does I Delhi think. have a particular problem? Uh, Delhi doesn't have a particular problem, except that the Delhi girls are forward-looking. They are going out. They are coming out. They are no longer you in those four walls. Delhi is reflective of a reality that runs through all the cities of India? Yes. Delhi is a reality that reflects Bombay or Madras or any other place also. Except that the press has so far said that Delhi is an exception. You are disagreeing with that. I'm disagreeing with that. So I Bombay, don't think, yes. Chennai, Calcutta, yes. they are all as bad. All as bad. And these some of these rape cases are not being reported because it's the kin who are doing it. So in fact, yes. there's a real sense in which the problem is mm. the character of the Indian male yes. and the manner in which he refuses to change his attitude to women. Yes. More than the character, it's the mindset, I would call. Because he thinks it's his right. Because this is right how he's... Right to No, his right to make a woman subordinate. In any way that you make him make her and rape powerless. Is how he huh. exercises yes, his rape power. is a form of showing her that she is subordinate. That he he controls power. There is a debate. It's a power structure also. There's a debate that's been going on in the Indian press for perhaps mm -hmm. the last six months, maybe a little longer, mm -hmm. which tends to argue over the point whether liberal lifestyles and a liberal attitude encourages or deters rape. Where do you come down on that? Well, you call liberal lifestyles when women are liberal. But why aren't, why are men, when they are liberal, why don't we call it liberal lifestyles of them? And it's their lifestyle and their thinking that is going on. It's the woman who has to come out. How long is she going to be in those so four walls? So you're saying there's no connection between how a woman behaves and her attitude and the fact that she becomes a target for it. That no, argument is no, fallacious. No, I don't think the argument, is, you know, most courts and most people say that she was dressed like that, she was provocative. I mean, it's not just the dressing. When if, if every woman is... She has got a right to dress the way she likes. And in fact, this is borne out by the fact, isn't it, that yes. 8 out of 10 rapes actually happen in situations where the victim knows the offender, which yes. shows that in 80% yes. cases, exactly. lifestyle yes. and what they call the permissive society is it's not, not a connection. It's not a connection. I don't think it's a connection. It's still, I still argue that we have not educated our boys properly. We have to give proper education. You'll be surprised when I went to Kamati Pura and spent two nights there. And uh, I said, pe, why is it that there's no clientele with you in that Kamatipura brothel? When the women there said that our college today, is college is closed. The dependence, therefore, upon yes, the client is undeniable. Yes. I, I want to take uh, up in a big way with you mm. the attitude that Indian men have towards women. But before I come to that, mm. let's talk about the attitude of the police and the judicial system. When a rape is reported, mm. how do the police react? Well, police come ultimately from the same society from where all men come. So you mean they're not sensitive? Yeah, they're not sensitive. We are getting sensitized courses now for them. But they, they think of women also the same way. Uh, at least 80 people, 80% 80 of the people who report to our... Uh, you mean the attitude of the police is the woman asked for it, she was inviting trouble? Yes, it's okay. Aurat thi ho gaya, they say. Why don't we have hmm. more police women? I gather that only 2.09% of the police force is yeah. women-based. Why yeah, is that? Uh, where are women in any profession for that matter? So why talk about the police? But are we given there? the nature uh, of the statistics you read out, yes. I mean, one crime against a woman every seven minutes, yes. surely the authority should be having more police women rather than just police men. But unless you get these girls into schools, get them educated, how are women, police women, going to so come? the problem goes right back to the manner in which yes. girls are brought, brought up, up and the way they're educated. Yes. And we don't have seats in the parliament, we don't have seats in judiciary, we don't have seats so in bureaucracy. So it's a composite problem that has so to be handled a as a whole, yes. not piecemeal. Of course. Let's move mm. to what happens when a rape case gets to the court. Mm. What is the track record of the Indian judiciary in handling rape cases? Well, when I was the chairperson, I found it very depressing because uh, we suggested that there should be in-camera trial. But that's uh, just three, four years ago. Yes, three, about. four years ago, yes. And at that time, we objected to it that a woman is asked, how was it? What were your clothes like? Were you wearing bangles? And if why did the bangles break? The attitude break? of the judiciary is to disbelieve the woman yes. and to subject her to a form of harassment yes. while allegedly yes. simply cross-questioning. And the second question was that the man goes away on bail. And then he becomes an absolute terror to the family which has gone, undergone this trying kind of a trauma. So bail in such cases should be given with totally. great caution. This little child in one of the good public schools in the bus was raped, three-year-old girl, by the conductor. 
and by the time we could even do anything, the conductor was out and he was threatening the family. What about what sometimes is called the prejudice of the judicial system itself? I know that in the late 1970s there was something Bhavari called the Mathura Devi. rape case. And Bhavari Devi. And the Bhavari Devi case. Yes. I mean, in the Mathura rape case, mm. the Supreme Court argued that because the woman had earlier sought to elope, yes. she couldn't later claim to be raped. How often is judgment vitiated by this sort of prejudice? I'm afraid that I'm speaking about the judiciary, but judiciary also comes from the same stock of Indian men as all, all the rest. I mean, at no level of mm. Indian society is the attitude no. of the man different. No. If you That's a very seen, depressing comment you, you're making. You notice that about a week ago, there was a father who has done this to the child, three-year-old child. The child is in all India. But you know what you're coming family? very close to saying, Dr. Giri, and this may well be a fact, but mm -hmm. I'm only repeating it because I think we ought to be clear. Mm -hmm. You're saying that there is something unregenerate about Indian men, that whether he's a judge or a father or a policeman, mm -hmm. a husband or a brother. His, I'm saying that his attitude towards women is the same as any other man Regardless in of religion or caste regardless, or social position. Regardless. Men still think that women are, are, are not their inferior and they have to be subjugated, they cannot uh, be equal to them. These, this is the psyche of the man in India. L.K. Azbani, to name one person, the Deputy Prime Minister, mm. has for a while been advocating mm. a change in the law. He says that mm. the death penalty mm. for rape would be an effective deterrent. Immediately after a rape, all women also think, yes, let's kill him. But that's no solution. So you disagree? Because, yes, I disagree. Because killing a man and giving him punishment for this death sentence is no, no punishment at all. He goes away. Mean, In fact, are I'm you being saying that it's morally wrong to have a death penalty because to kill anyone is undesirable? Or are you no. saying that it wouldn't act as a deterrent? No, it wouldn't act as a deterrent. In because other words, that, it would be an enhancement is, of the law without become, any effect. Because as it is, the conviction rate is so low. And when you give a death penalty, the conviction rate will be even lower. And then there's nobody who's going to be punished because death penalty is a severe penalty. R.K. Raghavan, the director of the Central Bureau yes. of Investigation, mm -hmm. whose article I mentioned earlier, yes. says that not a change of law in the sense of upgrading and enhancing the law, mm -hmm. but perhaps room for plea bargaining to avoid tortuous court cases which usually end up being exactly. unsuccessful. We plea bargaining would bring justice. Yes, we need special courts to deal with rape cases. We need stringent punishment for such people. We need to show it to the public that we mean... But do you know what plea bargaining would mean? Plea bargaining would yes. mean that a man could claim to be guilty of a lesser offense than the one that he's accused of mm -hmm. and get justice at a lower level. Would that be acceptable? No, that's not acceptable. So then plea no. bargaining is not acceptable to you? No, that's not acceptable. To get justice at a, some crime which is lower than this crime is of course not acceptable. So you're saying that what one needs in fact is faster justice, yes, more absolutely. effective yes, court? Speedy justice, absolutely speedy justice and a, absolute stringent punishment, not punishment for but let, me point, let me point out something to you. Mm. That in the case of rape, mm -hmm. the conviction rate mm -hmm. is it's actually so a Well, actually, you say it's low, but it's actually not, because the general conviction rate for crime is 6%, the mm -hmm. conviction rate for rape is 27%, and the chief of police in Delhi says that the conviction rate in Delhi is 47%. So clearly, although judges may be biased, as we discussed mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. they no, do take rape seriously. No, I didn't say judges seriously. are biased, but judges' mindset is the same. I'm still repeating that. They're not biased. Then would it be the same? Because if the conviction rate is 27 for rape compared to a general conviction rate of 6%, mm -hmm. clearly there's a certain... I don't know from where they got the figures. 27% is a high figure. This is Mr. R.C. Gupta, the Commissioner of Police, in yeah, a recent interview in Frontline magazine. Yes, conviction rate, to my mind, is not that much. Because so you dispute this? Well, I wouldn't know, but I think that's a little doubtful. It seems doubtful. Yes. Too. Sadly, of course, rape is not the only form of violence that no. Indian women are subjected to. Mm. As we said earlier, one third of the households of this country mm. are scenes of domestic violence. Many people find this difficult to understand. What makes a family turn upon its own women folk? Same again, the psychology of the mother-in-law, psychology of the uh, man in the house, the superiority of his. But there they are bonds of father-daughter relationship, husband-wife relationship. Those are completely forgotten at these moments. Well, it's uh, usually not father and daughter. It's usually some other male member in the, in the family itself who, who pushes through this domestic violence. And then greed has become such a major uh, uh, point in our society today that every man is wanting a dowry. Dr. Giri, we've so talked about this in a sense. We've skirted around the subject. Let's mm -hmm. tackle it up front. Mm -hmm. You've said repeatedly that the problem lies in the attitude of the Indian man. Sure. Many would say that, in fact, Indian men tend to look upon women as unequal that they see them not as human beings but as objects. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. What is this due to upbringing, social factors, or is it something to do deeper a Malaysian Indian society? Well, it's deeper. I think it's it's, it's a deep rooted thing where they first started off with protecting women. It must have started off by protecting women, and in the course of protecting, they became superior. And they thought that women always need some kind of a protection, and obedience from the woman is a must. So you're saying that what was intended originally as, yeah, as protection, protection has become a perverse discrimination, it has, and it now has. mistreatment. And now mistreatment. Except that there's a paradox also, isn't there? Because Indian society at the same time calls us Lakshmi, Parvati, venerates motherhood mm-hmm. also. Yes. There's that very famous line from the Amitabh mm-hmm. movie mm-hmm. where he says, Ma. "Mere paas ma hai," mm-hmm. and yet. We may venerate motherhood, mm-hmm. but Indian society discriminates against daughters, wives, sisters, no. and definitely daughters alone. No, it's mother also is an absolute myth now, because how many men, you know, I know of thousands of women today who are widowed, who are being left to the mercy at Vrindavan or Varanasi or some place, and they're not being taken care of. So you're of. saying that even the veneration of motherhood is more yes. a Bollywood myth than yes. an actual yes, reality. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. When you see 16,000 women in Vrindavan being left off by their own children. Or in uh, Varanasi, or in Vrindavan, or any other religious Does place. the problem go deeper? Because if you think about it, mm-hmm. an Indian woman is never really identified in terms of her own personality. Yeah. She's always identified in terms of a relationship yes. to some man. But she's born, well, as you said, mm-hmm. she's born a daughter, mm-hmm. then she becomes a sister, mm-hmm. then she becomes a wife, mm-hmm. then a mother or a grandmother. Sure. But this she's never herself. Now, because of no economic independence. Now, women also need property rights. So we have to now cl- clearly state that she, they sh- she should have equal rights with the man, equal rights with the brother, and in the family that she goes in, she should have property rights, and also we should now make her that able that she should be economic. You're saying that the cause of the problem, hmm? and in fact the problem as you've identified it is the way Indian society perceives women, yes. is the absence of economic independence. Absence of economic independence. Nothing cultural, combined, it's just economic. No, combined with cultural factors, it's, it's a together thing. Combined with cultural factors and combined with illiteracy. But you know, these three things. Illiteracy mm. can be cured with education. Yes. Economic factors can be tackled by giving them job opportunities. Sure. But cultural factors mm. are so much deeper rooted and more difficult to yes. tackle. Yes. If the malaise actually lies at the cultural level, it does. Is it almost ineradicable? No, no, no. Today it's imperative that our religious leaders stand up, whichever religion it is, and they but do they? they talk but about. But do they? You say it's imperative, but they don't. Yeah, but we are forcing them. I called Shankaracharya the other day to talk about it. But you see, this is very interesting. Anywhere else in the world, one would expect mm. a call to conscience from religious from leaders. From religious leaders, yes, they have to come. And up this now. happens in Western societies, although mm. perhaps not as often as mm. and, and as successfully as it ought to. Mm. But in India, where it's needed. Where you are calling the Shankaracharya, no, it is not happening. happening. It is happening. But how did the sh- you said you called the Shankaracharya. Yeah. How did he respond to your call? He did respond. We talked about widowhood. We said, is it really that a widow is banned and she has to have a dress code? He said, no. Then we talked to... But sub- forgive me, you talked on the telephone about this. When is he going to say this in public? No, not on the telephone, in a public meeting. And Bhai Manjit Singh, he had a whole series of seminars on infanticide and female feticide. Uh, to stop so it. So you're saying to me that people no, like the Shankaracharya drop. are now stepping out and taking a position on this? Yes, uh, but it's a drop in the ocean. It's very, very little. It has to come out more. I would say it's just 0.1%. Do you all. think it will mm. happen more, as you put it? It depends on us now. It depends on the civil society, of what advocacy we do, how much interaction we do with them. So they're not going to come up on their There's own. There's a very interesting corollary mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Civil society has to go with leaders to take a position yes. that leaders ought to be taking on their own. Their own, yes. But then what sort of leaders are these? <laughs> these leaders need some kind of an advocacy from the civil society. The civil society has to be a pressure group which we are going to be, and which we are now. So far from leaders leading, Mm -hmm. leaders are being pushed. Leaders are being pressurized, yes, on many issues, whether they are political, whether they are religious, whether they are social. You know, you said a moment ago that the onus, in a sense, lies on civil society. Are there a few straws in the wind that suggest that this is happening? For instance, last year, Nisha Sharma, rather than accept unjustified demands for increased dowry from her intended in-laws, chose to call off her marriage. And then just earlier this month, mm. uh, Ritu Kumar in Meerut, yes, rather did. than accept the behavior of her in-laws, yes. again called off her marriage. Yes. How positive are these indications? Oh, no, these are very positive, but it has a backlash also. 
let us not forget that now many of these girls, they say that girl is like this, so we should not get married in that family. So it has its backlash also. There are many people who are coming back and telling us that they are afraid that our daughters would also do the same thing. So we have to be very the carefully. Can backlash be contained, perhaps even held in check, by the manner in which the press reports and covers her story? Yes, media has got a big role to play, and I think this backlash can be, uh, can be contained if these women, there are two factors. One is that there are more and more such women who speak out against it and don't care. Because after all, what will the men do if all the women in India say that we are not going to get married with dowry? And so what are the men have to get married? In other words, women other? Collectively, collectively actually have the power to yes. hold men in check if sure. they act collectively. Yes, we have to act collectively. But that's almost impossible to imagine. Not to so, it? not so impossible. Women are coming out. Panchayats are becoming strong. Women have strong. to actually form a trade union of women, a guild of women, yes, a guild and of women. deny men a marriage sure. to ensure that men behave themselves. Yes, not only for their, for their political really rights. But you don't really see that happening, do you? It could happen. For their political rights also, it could, they could but it's not likely together. to happen, is it? It is likely to happen. It is likely yes, to happen. Yes, I've got, I see a great future. You with believe the that the Nisha Sharmas and the Ritu Kumars sure. are setting a trend regardless yes. of the backlash you I, mentioned? I, I believe that it's going to happen. I believe the Panchayat women are playing a big role in this. Those who have been elected for 33% reservation in the Panchayat, these grassroots women have an effect. They are stopping crime at that very place. Panchayats are being trained and for leadership, how we can prevent these women from getting uh, trafficked or getting raped or getting uh, crimes against women. And these things will come slowly but steadily. It has taken us 50 years now to reach this place, and it will take us another 20 years. And I in hope. furthering this cause, mm -hmm. do you think the press is playing the right sort of role? After all, in the Nisha Sharma mm -hmm. case and later on in the Ritu Kumar case in Meerut, mm -hmm. the press actually played a very supportive role. Mm -hmm. yeah, they do did. you see that as encouraging the movement in the I right direction? I think the press has also become very sensitive to the issue. They are coming more and more. Previously, they used to only, I used to call it the crimes of India and not the times of India. And uh, now I've changed my mind because it is reporting some of the success stories. Some That's being unfair to single out the Times of India on its own. I no, imagine I mean, you're using all, it as a symbol you, of all yeah, other papers. Yeah, a of all the newspapers. But no. you think that the press is now moving around and taking a high principle stand, and sometimes even at the cost of circulation to support issues that are important to support? I'm very happy to see in the press more and more women working there, point number one. Point number two, the people who are coming into the press are sensitized youth who have taken up many of the reporting things, and that has made a difference. I'm very happy the way they're going about it. They're sensitive. Of course, many times these young press people come back and tell me that their editor has not accepted this story. So even within the press at the top level, yeah, there is a the certain amount level, of yes. old-fashioned thinking there to is, use the there euphemism. Is, there is, there is. Now, one of the things that you've been fighting for, mm -hmm. one of the things that political parties have promised but mm -hmm. patently failed to deliver, mm -hmm. is representation for women in parliament mm -hmm. up to perhaps 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Why is that so important? Because they're insecure. The men are insecure. They think if they're... No, that's so why men are refusing it. But why is yes. it so important to women to get this level of because representation? Because if we don't get it through this representation, we'll never be able to come to that line. Because we need an opportunity to get into the parliament. But what we're talking about is changing attitudes, changing upbringing, changing yes. culture. How will representation in parliament be anything because other than tokenism? No, because the policies that women are going to make, if they are 50% women in the parliament, they are going to make policies that are good for women. But can you legislate that men stop discriminating? We can't legislate that. How can you legislate that? In which case, stop? what would you do by increasing the representation of parliament? That because would change. Then I mean, I, let, don't misunderstand me. Women no. have a right to be in parliament. Yes. But how would it change the nature of the problem where they're Because in the planning commission, when we are planning those policies, in the other uh, the legislations that we pass, like this bill against domestic violence against women, has not yet been passed there. Imagine this. It's been languishing there for it's the last languishing two, three there, years. languishing there. Yes. This very bill, which is so important. And that has not come through. And so you're saying that the attitude will change, yes. and after that, the change in the way so society's mores actually yes. function yes. can only happen if women achieve political power. They could. You know, one is political power. Political power is not everything. I'm saying political power simultaneously with education, simultaneously with a sensitization program for men, simultaneously then to see the crimes that stop, and making women learn self-defense uh, ways. You use the word simultaneous, but actually, in fact, it's going to be sequential, isn't it? Yes. Because political power may come first, mm -hmm. education later, but changing society, society's mores, and the thinking of men yeah, that is, is a sometimes. long uphill task. Long struggle. uphill task, yes. Do you see it happening in the next 50 years? Sure. 
In my lifetime itself, I hope it will happen. In your lifetime, the discrimination that we're talking about against women will stop? It won't stop, but it will lessen. Markedly? It should. Because it hasn't happened in the I last I hope to live years. for the next 10 years, and I hope that there will be a change for the next 10 years. You're not being an optimist. You're not no. simply saying this to keep your spirit up. No, 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 no. If women are getting where they are now, if the trend is the same the way we are going just now, I'm sure we are going to achieve our targets. Dr. Giri, a Thank pleasure you. having you. Thank you very on the much, Karen. Thank you very much.